So, it's good to see you. We'll run our third video concerning the Quran and Hyde Park. Um, so, I'm going to uh, bring a couple of other bits of information here that will help you in your apologetics. Uh, this is uh, by Dr. Rafat Amari of Religion Research Institute. Dr. Rafat Amari of Religion Research Institute. Okay. And he's got an amazing website. Uh, it's an incredible website. And uh, those are all the topics that he covers in his website. False uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, etc. So if you go on his website, Religious Research Institute, Dr. Rafat Amari, absolutely amazing. Now here, this, this, this article is incredible. But he goes into the history of the Quran. And some of the things that he comes out with here are absolutely incredible. Um, he goes, the Quran claims for itself that it is mubin or clear. But if you look at it, you will notice that every fifth sentence or so simply doesn't make sense. Many Muslims and Orientalists will tell you otherwise, of course, but the fact is that a fifth of the Quran text is just incomprehensible. And, uh, he makes some amazing comments. He goes, the te that textual integrity of scripture, while it is suggested of the Quran, i.e. narrated Aisha, the verse of the stoning and of suckling an adult ten times were revealed and they were written on a paper and kept under my bed when the messenger of Allah expired and we were preoccupied with his death a goat entered and ate away the paper. So this is in Musnad uh, Hamad bin Hannibal volume 6 page 269. So that shows you that the Quran has not been preserved. A goat ate some of the Quran. Uh, he says, Surah 568, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law and the gospel and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. It is the revelation that come to thee from the Lord, etc. So what do modern day Muslims claims of corruption of the scriptures suggest about their own messenger, having apparently been ignorant to what today Muslims claim against? What do those actual pure and holy books suggest? about Muhammad's followers' feeble efforts to excuse away such as the Quran proclaiming the exact opposite of the whole gospel. 1 John 5.10 He that believeth the Son of God hath the witness himself, and he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. So Muslims will wiggle out of the fact that the Quran teaches that the Bible was given, the Torah and the Injil as, as God's word, according to the Quran. Muslims will try to wiggle out of that and say, no, the Injil was not God's word. So that they get out of the accusation and the criticism that that's what the Quran said. So what that means is, if they criticise the Bible, they're actually going against the Quran. But Muslims will try to wiggle out of what their actual Quran says. See, it's a lot of deceit and lies within Islam. Who authored the Quran? Anatomy of Quran, G. J. O. Moshi writes, From a number of Islamic books we gather that Muhammad was surrounded by many Christians, even if nominal. One of them was Warak bin Nufi. So he's saying that a lot of the material in the Quran comes from Christians and Jews whom Muhammad knew. 
uh, quoting from Anatomy of the Quran by J. G. O. Moshi, the man that teaches him is a young Christian friend of Muhammad called Jabir, whom Muhammad always visited at Mara quarters not too far from his house. The allegation was that when Muhammad visited Jabir and heard the stories of the Bible some were put on record, people believed that Muhammad usually presented these parchments and claimed he had received them hot from heaven through the angel Gabriel. So he was actually, Muhammad was actually visiting a Christian and then he would come back and say he got it revealed uh, from an angel. There's plagiarism in the Quran. In Quran 8.31 is um, uh, the reason the Korea, Korea said that is of course because they were tales from before Muhammad saw so, Quran 831 when our signs are rehearsed to them they say we have heard this before if we wish we could say words like these these are nothing but tales of the ancients <coughs> the reason the Korea said this that is, of course, because the, they were tales from before Muhammad. So Muhammad picked tales, stories that existed centuries before, used them, and people of his time said, you're only using things that were of the past anyway. It's not a new revelation. Moshe, it has been established that verse 1,121, 2, 9, uh, and 31 and of 46 of Surah 54 were lifted from a poem of pre exonic poet Imru Qais, Q A I S. Even at the time of Muhammad, some sneered at the challenge to produce a chapter like it. So, it's a very powerful and devastating article. You need to read that. Uh, the history of the Quran and then um, other articles, the false prophet Muhammad, uh, and it's on uh, Dr. Rafat Amari's website, Religion Research Institute. Powerful, powerful argument. Pa powerful piece of literature. Uh, Then, um, if you go to crossexamined.org, crossexamined.org, um, and look at the articles by Jonathan McClatchy, and Jonathan McClatchy, who's a friend of Jay Smith, has done an article called A Simple Reason Why the Quran Cannot Be the Word of God. A Simple Reason Why the Quran Cannot Be the Word of God. That's the name of the article. And in this article, um, it just goes into in depth of what the actual Quran teaches about the Bible, uh, and he and he quotes uh, a number of surahs, and he goes into depth. And then another article uh, that you could look at, which is quite powerful, is. The Preservation of the Quran by Samuel Green. You can get that at Answering Islam. The Preservation of the Quran by Samuel Green. And he looks in depth at the hadiths and shows that in the in the own Islamic sources, the Quran has not been preserved. Another issue that that we can bring bring out, which you can bring out in debates with Muslims, is lack of academic freedom. When you're debating a Muslim at Hyde Park, or talking to a Muslim, you can uh, a lot of them will dance around the issue of the Trinity. They'll dance around the issue of the Bible has changed and all the rest of it. Uh, once you've talked about the Hadiths and about what the Quran teaches and all the rest of it. You could always bring up the issue about academic freedom because in the Muslim world there isn't the same academic freedom as there is in the West. 
So it's a kind of false issue really, a false debate tactic because they can debate us and freely have free speech. But in Muslim countries there isn't that same free speech and there are academics who are trying to be critical of the Quran but are not able to do so. They don't have that freedom. So you could use that as a trump card and say, look, you might be a good debate with me or we're having a good discussion and you're kind of holding your own. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not a fair debate because you've got a knife, you've got a gun at my head because I haven't got that same academic freedom that you have in our country. Because if I was to go to a Muslim country or a land that's been powerfully influenced by Islam, I haven't got that academic freedom. And here's my proof. In the book uh, Fundamentalism by Malice Ruth Venn, Fundamentalism by Malice Ruth Venn, 2007. So here's the book. Here's the book. It's the book down at the bottom. So there's the book. Okay, can you see it? So it says Higher critical scholarship of the Quran using methodologies adapted from biblical criticism is still largely confined to scholars working in Western universities. So sensitive is this area for Muslims that Ibn Warik, a Muslim born writer trained in Arabic who accept the findings of radical Western scholarship, has felt it necessary to publish his work under a pseudonym name. The Egyptian academic Nazu Abu Zayed, who ventured to use modern literary critical methodology, in his approach to the Qur'an, was forced into exile. Higher criticism of the Qur'an, where the text is deconstructed in accordance with methods developed by biblical scholars since the 18th century, is still very largely confined to scholars who were not Muslims. Examples include the work of John Waynesborough, Patricia Crone and Gerald Hawking. Horting, Western scholars of Islam, do not accept the traditional view of its origins as related in the earliest texts. 2007. So basically, you know, the Muslims at Hyde Park are debating and using the debates, uh, opportunity to debate and have freedom of speech. Yet in their own Muslim countries, they don't allow the freedom of other of their opponents. Scholars are, are met, pushed into exile. Uh, novelist have fats was put on their head. So it's not, you know. So there's a hypocrisy at Hyde Park. They want the freedom to discuss and criticise Christianity there, but you can't go to a Muslim country and criticise Islam and, and have critical discussion and debate in Muslim countries. So there we are. So any, any more uh, thoughts there? So Yeah, you can go into contradictions of the Quran. There are contradictions. Uh, so we have... Um, Uh, God's day is a thousand years. In Surah 32, 5, he directed the ordinance from the heaven unto the earth, and it extended unto him a day, whereof the measure is a thousand years of that ye reckon. And then it says God's day is 50,000 years. In Surah 74, the angel and the spirit extended unto him in a day, wherein the span is 50,000 years. Uh, the Quran says the words don't change. In Surah 10, 64, there are good tidings. In the life of the world and hereafter, there is no changing the words of Allah, that is the supreme triumph. God's word changes in Surah 6, 101. And when we put a revelation in place of another revelation, and Allah knows best what he revealeth, they say, Lo, thou art but inventing, most of them know not. Uh, God's word doesn't change, according to the Quran, there is none who can change his words. Surah 18, 27. Surah 59, Lo, we have even revealed the reminder, and Lo, we verily are its guardian. Uh, God's word does change. Nothing of our revelation, even a single verse, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring in place one better or the like. Uh, Surah 13, 39, Allah effaceth what he will and establish what he will. So, there are contradictions in the Quran that you can look at and... There's some more, um, and I would make sure that you study the Arabic and study historical sources before you actually uh, bring the. Just uh, that 
actually bring um, yeah uh, let's see, let's see what's there can't find it so oh yeah um, partial contradictions Pharaoh according to the Quran in Surah 7 125 Pharaoh used crucifixion in dealing with the sorcerers a practice which historical evidence gives no precedent to before the Babylonian Empire this once again a problem of historical compression um, Alexander the Great according to the Quran Surah 1889 to 98 Alexander the Great was a devout Muslim and lived to a ripe old age. Historical records, however, show that Alexander the Great died in 33 uh, years of age and believed he was divine, forcing others to recognize him as such. Uh, the Trinity, according to the Quran, Surah 5116, the Christians believe in three gods, Father, Mother and Son. This shows the influence of heretical Christian sects on uh, Islam. Mary, according to Quran, Surah 1928, 3 and 33, 36, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the daughter of Imran, or Amran, the father of Moses and Aaron. Mary is also said to be the sister of Moses and Aaron. Clearly, Muhammad is confused with Mary and Miriam. So those are contradictions of the Quran. So, just, uh, yeah, you can ask like for historical detail. So, what historical information do you have of the night journey when um, Muhammad is supposed to have gone on a white horse and flown to the great mosque in Jerusalem? You can ask questions like, what is the historical evidence for that what is the historical evidence that Muhammad um, had revelations from Gabriel who was there what evidence can you provide uh, for that position okay so that that's uh, some basic um, apologetic material that you can use to, to critique, critique Islam I hope that's been a help to you uh, you can get a lot of that material from Answering Islam or Answering Muslims um, and uh, from there you can find lots of research material. Okay, I hope that's been a blessing. Take care.